What did you think of him? Chris was terrific. I thought uh, uh, 13 plus years, uh, not too many complete games, not too many uh, uh, shutouts here. I thought I thought tonight he was excellent. Uh, three pitches in the strike zone. Um, he was a. That's a very good offense, and uh, you know we talked about it before the game. A, a team in uh, Georgia State that uh, was ranked in the top five last year in hitting, ranked in the top five in runs scored, uh, and uh, you know you could tell when you missed or uh, you didn't make good pitches. You know they got good swings off even tonight, as good as Chris was. But uh, I thought the difference today was a, a great three pitch mix. He was able to you know throw his change up into the strike zone early on. He's able to throw his fastball in, uh, which you know I thought was a difference maker in a lot of at bats. But uh, just terrific, and uh, even you know the few times I thought that they threatened, he, you know he's able to control the running game and just you know make pitches. And of course, you know terrific defense tonight. How did you want to try to approach Crane tonight? Because you know he's an All-American, came in tonight. You struck him out in the seventh. We had a guy on double. And you, you called a pitch there. What did you want there, and how did Chris deliver it? Well, they, they they've been uh, all of them. You know, I think their approach, all of them. Uh, Georgia State is, you know, they're very aggressive early in the count, and, and certainly he was uh, hitting the first pitch of the game, and uh, and you got to be very careful. There, there's not often that I think that uh, you know the leadoff guy is you know as good and as scary as he is, uh, and of course he's a base, you know, he's a base runner, and so you not only it's it's the, the double threat where not only can he hurt you with the bat, but he can hurt you with his legs, and, and I just thought Chris you know, did a great job of mixing the balls in and out. Um, again, uh, you know some some really good change-ups to him, too. Their guy out of the pen kept you all from extending the lead. Yeah. What, what did you think of your offense? We, you know, uh, better than we were. I thought we had, you know, uh, some better swings than we did on Wednesday night. Just we, just not enough base runners. It's hard, to, it's hard to have offense. It's hard to do much when you don't have a lot of base runners out there. And, you know, one of the things, that if you looked over the last 18 innings, when we've gotten base runners, we've been able to make things happen. We've been able to steal. We've been able to bond. Uh, we've gotten some clutch base hits. We just haven't gotten enough people on. And, you know, uh, you want to just the things I just said on the radio is uh, it's tough. Offense doesn't, it's not there all the time. And uh, But you got to pitch, you got to play defense, and we've done that. And uh, you know, hopefully tomorrow's going to be uh, you know, an even better day offensively. Just now 15 shutout innings for Chris. How much is this start helping his confidence? I don't know. Well, we'll see. I mean, I, I think he feels pretty good, you know, especially after this outing. I mean, to, you know, uh, it's it's one thing to, to, to put six innings up, you know, uh, you know, in your first outing, but then to come out today in front of your home crowd, another great uh, student section, and and to, to pitch like he did against, uh, you know, again what I consider a very good offense. How early during the game did you know that he might be able to go the whole way? Uh, I don't think we ever look at it look at it that way. I mean, uh, I you know, I actually got Greenwood up in the in the eighth just because I didn't think he'd finish. And uh, he was at 78 pitches after seven and knew we'd get get around around 100. And you'd like to bring the guy in that's going to finish without runners on. And so you start to think about that in advance. Even though his pitch count was you know very efficient and, and, and low, uh, you know more importantly, you know let's you know let's make sure we don't overdo it and let's make sure that we bring the guy that's going to finish the game in, it'd be nice to come in with a, with a clean slate rather than come in with runners on. So we got Greenwood up in the eighth, and uh, but once he struck out, uh, I guess it was Prang, uh, in, the, in the eighth, uh, and at 88 pitches, uh, you know, and of course, you talk to him, he wanted to finish, and uh, felt great. What's your approach like that when you talk to a guy that you might leave in, you might take him out? I mean, how much leeway do you give them? I I didn't say anything to him until the to the uh, the bottom of the eighth, and just want to make sure he felt okay. A lot of times you can see it in their face, um, and you know, Chris is kind of new. You know, you got to kind of know the guys. Most guys want to stay in, but you can kind of tell by their body language. A lot of times it's it's more of what I see and less of you know the the, the discussion or dialogue. Uh, but uh, you could tell he felt strong, and that's why I think it was probably the biggest decision was at 88 pitches and watched the last at bat against Prane yeah. that you knew he could finish versus you know struggle through that eighth. You know, he gives up a, a first pitch base hit, and then really you know looked like he cruised after that, so he looked like he was in pretty good control.